Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Today we're gonna talk about RAM and this server has 384 gigabytes of RAM. And I do get the question from time to time, how can you afford this much RAM? Well, today I'm gonna involve you in this very well kept secret that um, goes a little bit back. It's, um, you probably remember that years back a memory factory burned down in um, Asia somewhere, I forget where, but um, this meant that RAM production was more or less not existing for quite a while. And all the big companies like Lenovo, IBM, HP, Dell and well, they still had a lot of demand for RAM. So they needed to come up with a solution to still provide RAM even though they were not able to get new RAM from this um, now burned down factory. Uh, there were more than one factory but this one was apparently the big one. You might not be familiar with RAM blocks but they're kind of hard to produce. They're there is a quite a substantial error rate in RAM blocks and if you have servers you will also be recognizing that uh, very often it's a RAM block that fails in your server and it has to be replaced and it's not a big deal because we do it all the time especially with this e ECC RAM which is common in servers and it was also very common back in the day when this memory factory burned down or at the time these four gigabyte blocks was the most common blocks sold on the market that doesn't mean that the memory factory didn't produce other memory blocks just meant that the four gigabytes was they were the most widely used but the factory also produced bigger blocks and smaller blocks which meant that when it burned down, um, many companies um, could not get the 4 gigabyte blocks, but they actually had a stock of bigger blocks because they were not selling as much. And as the memory blocks are difficult to make, when you actually made some good chips, they went into um, bigger blocks because prices are better on bigger blocks. So uh, they had quite a substantial number of bigger memory blocks on stock like a lot the memory companies they like to have the bigger blocks on stock because they know they're gonna be selling them when the, when we move from 4 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes they will just move up in production and instead of producing the 8 gigabyte blocks that would be the common ones they will go and produce 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes blocks so they actually had a lot of stock and so did a lot of the ventures like Lenovo slash IBM, Hewlett Packard, Dell and other companies. They had a lot of bigger blocks on stock which kind of saved the day because when you as a company go out and buy a lot of servers you um, kind of want those servers and a lot of the smaller companies they were just told that they were not able to get the servers because of the memory issue no blocks available but there was like very big contracts like if Google has ordered 10,000 servers there will be a very big penalty for not delivering 10,000 servers to Google or Amazon or very big companies the server producers would have to pay a really big fine for not delivering on time so um, what they did was actually they took some of the bigger blocks that um, they had in stock and they kind of made them smaller and this is a very well kept secret and one that we are gonna fix today because everybody wants to change their 4 gigabyte blocks into 16 gigabyte blocks and it's doable so uh, I want to show you something on the bench over here and um, you will see why this is a awesome trick. Okay, here is what I'm talking about. This is a 4 gigabyte block and up here is a 16 gigabyte block. Do you see the similarities on these two blocks? The chips are kind of aligned the exact same. There is a little bit here where one of them is pushing the other way. Uh, even this little chip up here is the same. But 
it, these are more or less the same blocks. It's not exactly the same layout with the, these specific two that I have here, but this is actually a 16 gigabyte block that has been reduced by Lenovo slash IBM to satisfy customers uh, and deliver the servers at time. And what they have done is actually they have deactivated some of these memory circuits. On these blocks you can see that there is some capacitors and there is also some resistors in this part here. And then there is a little bit uh, right here in the middle and uh, one in each side. But all this lane down here is more or less, there is nothing mounted there. And if we go to, this is a Kingston branded one. Um, to this one which is the 16 gigabytes you will see that there is all these um, other components over here uh, which they have left out on this block they have actually just been removed this one was made like this one ish but had to be altered to be uh, sold as a 4 gigabyte block so um, but why didn't they just sell them as 16 gigabyte blocks well, they didn't want to totally ruin the RAM market. If you suddenly just shift everything to 16 gigabytes, the prices will go down. Everything else will be unsellable and people will only want the 16 gigabyte blocks. So they had to alter these um, down to 4 gigabytes so not to break the market and make sure that they could also, when the factory came up and running again, keep selling memory for a good price. There is quite a profit on RAM. Okay, here is another example of a memory block that um, this, this is labeled as two gigabyte, but this is really an eight gigabyte block. So one fourth of this is actually being used. The rest was uh, disabled by uh, that one and that one was missing on this one. So I have actually soldered in. Oh, can we see that? You can kind of see my bad soldering right there and right there. Um, I have soldered in those small caps and these are 10 nanofarads and they are widely available um, on Amazon. I got these. Uh, the link will be in the description of uh, how you do this. But you more or less you just get the right memory block and you get a, some capacitors and you solder those in. Here you get a gain of 6 gigabytes. And you have to remember to exchange the label. All the rest of it will be the same stuff. This mostly works for server RAM, but there is also a few blocks for the, um, you know, the high-end, high-frequency gaming RAM stuff that is on the list. Uh, that that list will also be in the description. That um, if you can if you can find those blocks, you can you can get 32 gigabyte blocks out of those. Um, they are a bit more expensive, but with a few capacitors, you can um, you can quadruple the size of them. This is this is really an awesome ninja trick to get a lot of RAM in your server, like 380 something. I do actually believe that I have a bad cab in there because also the server over here is complaining, and I'm kind of like missing 200 megabytes. Isn't that right? Yeah. I'm missing 200 megabytes of memory so I think I have to go in and check that again and actually um, find out which memory block I have done a really bad soldering job on but well I must admit this time I cheated because when I make these videos Amazon will be flooded with requests of um, getting the right stuff but I've actually gone out and bought some memory blocks for myself for my own need before I dare tell you about this so uh, I have left in the description a long list of memory blocks that you should seek out. There is the model numbers and um, also a link to where you can get these. And they're fairly cheap. Uh, server RAM is, is normally very cheap because you put in a lot of memory in a server and therefore the prices go down. I do hope you find this very attractive on this very special day to um, go seek out your new memory blocks and quadrupling the capacity of them for next to nothing price so um, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again doing something even more awesome the next time
have a really nice day. Bye bye.